I'm Diane McGarry. And I'm Tom McGarry. We're here with Drake at Arts. Our next art show is going to be September 25th from 4 to 9 p.m. and Saturday, September 26th from 1 to 4 p.m. We will have fine arts photographer Tom Briere, who's with us today to talk about his work. Hi, Tom. Hello, Diane. Thank Hi, you so much hey, for Tom. coming. Thank you very much. Thanks for the invitation. Oh, sure. So you just moved to Drakeit recently, correct? We did about a year ago. Mm. Yes, we're from Westford, Mass. Oh. So, so far away. <laughs> so far away, yeah. It was a good move. It was simple, <laughs> simple, but a little downsizing. Oh, yeah. So we um, found a good uh, location over on off 113. Oh, so nice. we're very happy. That's but nice. Yeah. And yeah. you've been a photographer for a while now. Yes, for quite a few years. Actually, started as a um, when I was in high school. Oh. So the first experience was uh, yearbook photography, hmm. and uh, so that w I was trained in sports and uh, uh, that kind of fast action, but also the slow pictures of everyone. That, that's right. Mm -hmm. And then uh, the uh, yearbook. Um, company asked me to train as a wedding photographer. Oh, oh neat! So oh. I didn't know yearbook companies did wedding photography. Well, there was a company uh, years ago called Loring Studios oh. and they did both uh, high school uh, portraits as well mm. as weddings and mm. they helped publish the yearbook. Mm. And so that was my first training. That is so neat! Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah it, was, it was very, very interesting. And then the local newspaper took it up and hired me as a, as a, what was called years ago, a stringer. Right, right. Uh, <laughs> so Don't I was they still a, call it that? Uh, maybe. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so I was, uh, did that for about three, four years when I was in college. Oh, nice. So that's the background of the training. And um, I've migrated away from that into more fine art and mm. uh, photography and still lifes and things like that. Mm. So, so let's see an example of your work. Sure. So not the yearbook work, though. Not the yearbook <laughs> work. Oh, so wow. here's, a, here's an example of a, a scenic that was taken uh, up in uh, Agunquit, Maine. Mm -hmm. And um, with, with photography, I think it's all about the light. So mm -hmm. the lighting condition here was uh, beautiful. Mm -hmm. Sky is beautiful. It's right in the morning. Oh, mm -hmm. yeah, that's magnificent. And uh, gives you great texture. So mm -hmm. I think that's... That's really, uh, you know, 90% of it. I'm doing a lot of landscape photography now, as well mm. as still lifes. And uh, getting up early in the morning is a challenge, but it's also very nice when you mm. get light like this and uh, condition. Do you need special filters for your cameras? No, not really. Um, this, is, this is really taken uh, without any uh, photoshopping. Um, the image is basically taken as a, what's known as a raw image. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. It's not a JPEG and it's not all these other compressed versions. It's a raw uh, file. Mm -hmm. and what does that mean? Well, raw file comes right out of the camera and it gives you all the information, all the color information and all mm -hmm. the tonal information mm -hmm. that you really need. Uh -huh. And then at that point, you can use a uh, piece of software and there are a variety of softwares you can mm -hmm. use to develop the image and uh, basically into what you saw. So mm -hmm. that's part of where the artistic quality comes in, mm -hmm. is developing the image and um, doing any kind of color enhancement and sharpening mm -hmm. and things like that. But mm -hmm. I don't really think of developing a photograph in terms of a computer use. I think of it more in, mm -hmm. you go in the dark room in and film. you have all these chemicals, yeah. yeah, and you've got the paper and the, yeah. the negatives and you're very careful and don't come in the room, yeah, mom, exactly. don't open the door. <laughs> exactly, yeah. You know? mm -hmm. Yeah, see a lot, of the, a, a lot of the work is done for you in the cameras, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. but uh, to get the best quality, you really need to uh, photograph them, what's called a raw image, and then you use post-processing techniques or de post-development techniques mm -hmm. huh. to develop the image and then you can get colors that you saw in that image and mm. sharpness and tonal qualities mm. oh that wow. you probably couldn't get out of a camera. Mm. Cameras are pretty good though. I mean, they're mm. really good. I know, they've <laughs> These changed. Days, it's a little girl. <laughs> they're excellent. Yeah. They really are. Yeah. But yeah. 
I had a little brownie camera when I was. Yeah, that's what I had too. I started <laughs> with that one. <laughs> I just aged myself. Yeah, I mean, yeah that's okay. <laughs> Let's look at another one. Okay. Oh. So this one, again, uh, early morning, beautiful sky. Uh, you, you can't make this up in Photoshop. I mm -hmm. mean, this is natural stuff, uh, a natural scene. This is actually Beaver Brook in Westford, Massachusetts. Ooh. So uh, is the, the sun so yellow in the morning? Or is that something that you added the intensity I, to? I added a little bit because this is what I saw, mm -hmm. but I didn't overdo it. This is really, I mean, this is very early in the morning. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. uh, the sun's just coming up. Mm -hmm. So when you say you add a little bit because this is what you saw, this isn't the first thing that comes out on the raw picture. No. If you look at a raw picture, it probably will look a lot uh, the, the the colors will be more subdued, uh -huh. okay, and the sharpness won't be there. Uh, but you're actually using the software to enhance and try to bring it out. Mm. Oh, wow. Yeah, so it's like developing, you know, and, and, and uh, when you make a print, as Ansel Adams used to say, print is the, you know, the, the, the execution. That's kind of what you're doing here. You're mm -hmm. developing it in a certain direction, and you're using those techniques to basically um, try to make it what you saw and mm -hmm. bring out the, an emotional feeling in the image. It's uh, spectacular. Oh, thank I, I you. I love the texture in the clouds, the golden and the white oh, yeah. right next to each other. So that's yeah. really cool. Yeah, thanks. I mean, what, what's, what this isn't doing is this is not clouds from one photograph yeah. and trees from another photograph. Oh, no. yeah. Yeah. This is how it was. Yeah. We're just taking the image yeah. and we're enhancing it to really create an emotional impact. Mm. Mm. I can feel the coldness and crispness <laughs> of the, the It was pretty tails, cold. <laughs> <laughs> it was very you know, cold that they, morning. If you walked in those, you'd crunch, crunch, exactly. crunch. Mm. The icicleness of it. <clears throat> and then that bursting forth with the beauty of the warmth yeah, it's, it, was, it was a beautiful morning, and, and usually these kind of skies are right after storms. Ah, so this yes, was right after a uh, very light snowstorm that mm -hmm. happened overnight. Mm -hmm. So you can see, you know, the cattails have a little bit of snow on them and, yeah. uh, and mm -hmm. so forth. So um, this was near where we used to live, <coughs> and I mm -hmm. knew this area, so I used to go by it quite often. Mm -hmm. And uh, that's a nice thing when there's a location that's close to where you're living, you can frequent and uh, find out when uh, the best time, mm. the best light, and so nice. forth. Have you found a place like that in Drake yet? I'm still looking. <laughs> <laughs> I'm still looking. I'll have to give you some of my favorites later. <laughs> sounds good. That sounds like a deal. Yeah. <laughs> Excellent. Mm. I actually love going out and seeing my chickens every morning be as the sun's coming up because it gives me a view of the whole day yeah. and mm. how it will be. And every morning it's different, like you're saying about oh. your favorite place. It's oh, sure. different every single time. Oh, sure. Yeah. Sometimes uh, <coughs> you can uh, pick a spot and then uh, from each season uh, you can yes. take a series of photographs uh. and that's kind of an interesting project. Mm. Yeah. Mm. Chronicles. You're yeah. chronicling time in a specific mm. space. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, if you think about it, the camera is only sampling, you know, uh, a hundredth of a second. Mm. I mean, this thing yeah, was taken yeah. probably a little bit uh, longer, but mm. it's not much. Mm. No. A blink. <laughs> a quicker blink. than a blink of a A line. blink. That's right. Yeah. That's right. Do you have so another piece for us? I think so. Oh. So, um, I the good thing I'm not hungry. <laughs> <laughs> I just want to grab one of those no. grapes. <coughs> I happen to, uh, my wife and I happen to visit the uh, Museum of Fine Arts uh -huh. oh. and, uh, you know, studying the Dutch painters a little bit. And I said, uh -huh. gee, let me go back and see if I can do something mm -hmm. in that same kind of vein. Mm -hmm. And so uh, she had just come back from the store with some fruit <laughs> and uh, I took it down to the studio and... Uh, this is what I came up with. Uh, the, um, the dish is actually a dish that we purchased in Portugal. Oh. And I thought that it was an interesting, you know, that bluish, um, 
kind of uh, tint that uh, they have in Portugal. Portugal is known for their white and blue tile that they oh. have everywhere. Sure, for in the glaze on and the top. And the glaze part. on the top. So, mm -hmm. um, yeah. so we put it together. And uh, I'm interested actually in doing a series of these uh, as uh, decorative uh, images for the home. That green thing is a lime, right? <laughs> it is a lime. It's and how'd you get that intense green, or was that the, the color of the fruit? It's pretty. It, it's pretty much there. Wow. I mean, I like I said, I, I do it a little bit, yeah. but it's not. I don't oversaturate. Oh, no, it's really fresh. It's yeah, a very fresh yeah. fruit. Even the apples, the way I can hear the crunch of them <laughs> yes, if I went and yes. pick one of those up. Yeah, and uh, actually, the the backstory is it started out as a lemon. But oh, the yeah? tonal quality of the lemon was huh. too bright. Oh, you wow. kept looking at the lemon and forgetting about the grapes. <laughs> so I decided to tone it down. A so bit. you changed the fruit? I changed it. So mm -hmm. that's I nice didn't want thing. people to think that, oh, he just made the lemon green. Yeah, which no, you no, can no, also no. Do. No, that's not, that's not right. <laughs> you don't do that. No. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> so, uh, but uh, I'm very, getting very interested in doing still lights. Mm -hmm. And. Uh, uh, done a series of them with some flowers and so forth and uh, uh, with fruit. So now that the winter months are here and, uh, uh, you know, it's uh, very cold and difficult to get out at 3 o'clock in the morning, yeah. this is a good uh, project sure. for, the, for the winter. So this was done indoors, apparently. It was done indoors. Did you do uh, anything special for light? Yeah, um, I like natural light pretty much yeah. um you I have a lot of natural light at three o'clock in the morning no no these are done <laughs> unless there's at a full a, moon out that's right and these are done at a more reasonable time of the day okay. <laughs> <laughs> but it's, um, it's, you have all the textures in this too the the um molteness almost of the backdrop and the tile glaze and little texture on the plate with the weaving and the cloth underneath mm, yes. just adds more depth as well as what you have from the fruit, which is mostly, I mean, apples and grapes don't have tons of texture. They're very shiny, but the avocado and the lime soften that. Mm. Yeah, I, uh, this particular one was done in uh, and the studio lights. Ah, okay. uh, and the studio lights were conditioned or modified, they call it modified, in, in a way to soften it. Hmm. Um, I like... I prefer to work with north light. Okay. We have a, a small uh, study in our new home, uh -huh. and it faces north. Huh. And uh, the light in that room is absolutely spectacular. Huh. You know, so it really emulates the kind of light that the masters used to use in the old really? days. Huh. Yeah, the masters would typically use north light because there was not sun coming in through a, a window. So yeah. north is particular, is unique because you never have sun in the north. Yeah. So if you have a north light, you could paint or you could photograph all day with mm. indirect light. And oh, wow. it's beautiful, beautiful mm. light. Mm. Yeah. I so never thought of that. I try to simulate that even if I'm in my studio uh, under studio lights mm. to, uh, to get a very soft and indirect light so mm. that shadows are not very very harsh. Yeah, um, they're not crisp. Mm -hmm. There's right. a real gentleness to That's it. That's right. Um, mm. Unless, I mean, uh, for certain types of photography, it's the best thing to oh, do. Oh, sure. You know, uh, something dramatic and... Uh, well, weddings and... Uh, weddings and... I'm and graduating from high school now. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um. yeah, and uh, uh, portraits. Yes. With some portraits that are, you know, mm. high fashion stuff that oh, you yeah. see in magazines. Very... Mm. Um, uh, high uh, lighting ratios and very crisp shadows, mm. but a lot of the work that I do, I like to have a soft um, shadow, especially for these still lifes. Mm. Mm. You used a term. You said light ratio. What does that mean? So the 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 depth of the the depth of the shadow versus the light. So if so, the how shadow, dark the shadow is. How dark the, the shadow is. is. That's the ratio mm. between the 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 shadow and the uh, highlight side mm -hmm. of the image, you know. Mm -hmm. I think we have two more of your photos. Okay, sure. Mm -hmm. <gasps> uh. I want to go swimming. <laughs> so this, uh, <laughs> this one is taken um, in East Chop uh, down at Martha's Vineyard. Hmm. 
Um, and I've been starting to experiment uh, with very long exposures. So this uh -huh. is a 45 second exposure Ooh. to uh, make the water look very blurred and, and, mm. uh, and glassy. Mm. And, uh, it looks frosted, actually. Yeah, yeah it looks frozen. It's, it's, it's interesting, but it wasn't frozen. Mm. It, it was uh, moving around, which yeah. was good. Mm. Um, and the other thing that I've been trying to do is to simplify the compositions quite a bit mm. and eliminate uh, as many elements as I can. Mm. So here I was just trying to do a very simple uh, sunset with um, the water having no texture to it, mm. you know, as simple as I could, yeah. the sky the same way, and then one element, which was this, uh, uh, this dock mm. that was in it. It's bridged to nowhere. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so the water looks a little fuzzy. Watch it, yes. But somehow the sky and the cloud, or the cloud, do not look fuzzy. Is that just because it was still not moving much? They weren't moving. Okay. Yeah, and, and you know, uh, under conditions that would be windy, yeah. you'd get the same kind of wispiness yeah. in the clouds. Yeah. But they were not uh, moving much, and the water was moving quite a bit. Cool, because there's so a nice contrast between the, uh, the fuzzy texture of the water <laughs> and the crispness of the dock and the sky. So yeah. this is cool. But it's an interesting technique and um, uh, several of my uh, friends uh, have done a lot of this, but mm. you know, this was at 45 seconds. They're doing three minutes. Oof, wow. And it's, it's very interesting technique. It's just absolutely beautiful mm. uh, what you can get out of some of these. You have to pick the, s the scene and mm -hmm. um, sort of pre-visualize what you want out of it. Mm. Mm -hmm. I would think there'd be a lot of trial and error in that. Quite a bit, yeah, mm. quite a bit. What and happens when a kid comes and throws a stone in the pond? <laughs> or a bird goes across, <laughs> you know? That the birds or the planes that well, come? Well, what's interesting about that is that if the exposure's long enough, when a bird comes in, you won't even see it. Ah. Because yeah. it's all, it's all averaged out. Mm. That's interesting. Yeah. yeah. It's the same thing like if you were to take um, a picture of uh, people moving, mm. um, you know, a street scene with mm -hmm. three or four people. Yeah. If it's long enough, the buildings will be perfectly exposed, mm -hmm. but the people will be blurred. Mm. Mm. And so if you wait long enough, they'll sort of disappear. <laughs> <laughs> wow. wow. That's either profound or slightly creepy. Yeah. I'm, not <laughs> yeah, I'm not sure either, right? Yeah, yeah. but it's, um, it's a consequence of, you know, the moving yes. and the, the uh, static part of the image mm. and the moving part of the image. Mm. Yeah. So, it's, huh. yeah. I think we have one more. Okay. Mm. Oh, uh, wow, this is very different from everything else. Yeah, said. so again, uh, with the, sort of the nature theme, uh, I try to find elements that are in a natural state. Mm. And this was uh, taken actually in uh, Acton mm. on a very, very cold morning. Mm. We had just had a frost, and um, this ground cover had all the frost on it mm. and uh, you know that the, the leaf you can't get close to this because if you get close to it your breath will get oh, rid of wow. all I know of this. I was wondering I don't so even yeah. see where you picked up the leaf it must have just been sitting there it's just sitting <gasps> mm. oh wow so if you touch it so you just those, came across it like yeah this? yeah and th oh this is gosh. part of you know this is part of what I really like to do is find natural mm. occurrences like this you just can't it's magical. And, and it's not, again, this is not photoshopped. Right. It's just going out early in the morning mm -hmm. and trying to find the right subjects. And uh, yeah, so this, um, this uh, is almost like you painted mm. every leaf with this little bit of frost. Well, Jack Frost did that, didn't yeah. he? Yeah. <laughs> but it's, na it's nature and it's natural, so... Um, you can't you can't reproduce it, and it, and to do something like this with Photoshop, which I I don't really do that kind of manipulation. Yeah. Yeah. 
um, would be very difficult. Mm. You could probably do it, but that's not what I'm about. I'm really mm. about trying to find natural things in their state and lighting them in a really mm. good way so we can get a beautiful image to try to mm. get some emotion. This is really nice. That Thank is. you. It's incredible. Thank you. So how did you come to the decision to do natural things in as beautiful a state as you can find them? Mm. I, I think I just evolved into that. I think, uh, you know, as I said, I was trained in uh, uh, newspaper portraits, weddings, and so forth. Mm. And uh, as I aged... Um, is that I what you did full time? No, I didn't. I was mm. actually an engineer, mm. but uh, that that work got me through college, and it mm. paid, right. <laughs> it paid for that? college. Yeah. Yeah. And um, so after college, I still did some of the weddings and so forth. But uh, mm. with uh, family coming along and the boys and everything, mm. it was difficult to uh, mm. do a lot of weddings because the weekends were family oh, yeah. Yeah. as opposed yeah. to you know weddings. So I gave that up completely. Wow. So you had a number of sons. I had two sons, mm. two boys. And uh, so we, we gave that up. And uh, uh, we basically just started to evolve into mm. this kind of thing that uh, I found. And, and really, really enjoy getting out in the mornings. Mm. Uh, you know, yeah. it's, everything is sort of fresh. Do you have a name for that? So it's not a landscape. It's not a still life because it's not pose. I'm not sure it needs a name, but you, you uh, have mentioned, you know, finding things in nature. Uh, apparently you don't do uh, like industrial or city scenes. It's like really out in relatively pristine nature, right? Yeah, I have to come up with well, something. <laughs> or, or not, because somehow yeah. that could get in the way. Um, yeah, I mean, it's... It's not that I ha haven't or won't do the other, yeah. but I just, uh, ah. w what I'm about is really trying to focus on subjects that would be appropriate for uh, decorating. Okay. You know, yeah. images that you'd put on the walls. Oh. So you want to decorate space. Decorate space. So you mm. want to bring what's outside in. Yes. Yeah, mm. that kind of thing. Mm. Yeah, so, and, um, if someone, you know, says, go take a picture of whatever it is, I'll sure. do it. But uh, yeah. I prefer to do this. And oh, oh, sure. The you have the time to be skills. the fine artist, right? The mm -hmm. fine artist photographer. Yeah, it's, mm -hmm. di it's difficult. You know, I've struggled with uh, what's the definition of mm -hmm. fine art photography, you know. So mm -hmm. it's, it's a difficult, there are many, many different um, interpretations. Mm -hmm. And I'm still trying to figure it out. <laughs> You well, know, you, you mentor and teach people, too, is that correct? I, yeah, I actually that. I'm a member of a photo club in the, in the region, the Neshoba Valley Photo Club. Yeah. And I actually hold a uh, roundtable discussion session hmm. uh, once every quarter. And uh, during these sessions, what happens is people will bring images in for discussion, hmm. and we uh, will project them. and. Uh, we can talk about anything. They can talk about why they took it. Mm. Um, the focus really is why you took the picture, though. Mm. You know, what are you trying to communicate mm. with this photograph, mm. as opposed to the technical aspects of it, you know, what software you use mm. or whatever. Or how to get it to what you're trying to say. Uh, uh, yeah, exactly. So sometimes... So it's almost like a writer's critique circle in a way, but for photographers. Yeah, in a sense, in a sense. And sometimes we'll have subjects, you know, oh. um, we'll give them an assignment that says, uh, bring me a photograph that shows a relationship. Mm. And so they'll come in with something that shows a relationship and mm. then talk about why they feel that really communicates that, yeah. that uh, value of relationship. Mm. Um, it's very different than some of the other uh, types of discussions that you get into in a photo club, which is, uh, th they're very technical. Yeah. So we're trying to break off and give people an opportunity to, mm -hmm. to look at it from a more artistic standpoint. Mm -hmm. uh, How would you say that photography has changed 
over the course of your lifetime because it, oh. really it was a new thing, right? A oh hundred years ago, it was a new thing, and now people don't. E everyone has a camera. It used to be just one person or very few could afford a camera, and you needed strong shoulders to carry this big thing around, yeah. and you had glass plates you had to be very careful with, and and now everyone's got one in their cell phone. Oh yeah. Well, the big I think the big difference or the big uh, change has been with the digital. Mm. Um, not that film is dead. Uh, we were just talking about that. Oh. But film is still active, yeah. uh, mostly in a, from a niche standpoint. But uh, I think the big change has occurred with with digital technology, mm. and, um, and now. There's another change, which is the, uh, what's the right word? The confluence of digital still and digital video. Mm. So these cameras that you have can take both video and still. Mm. And now people are looking at that as another product. Oh, yes. You know, when you make a presentation, it's not just still video, uh, it's video interlaced mm. with stills. Mm. So this is really interesting. The, the, the iPhone, of course, has changed everything. Sure. Yeah. <laughs> and that's why you need to do something that I'm trying to do is a little bit more artistic mm. because the technology is there. People can just push the button and yeah. get the document side of it. Yeah. Uh -huh. So they can document everything yeah. easily with cell phones. Yeah. But how do you really communicate the artistic side? Right. Mm -hmm. So that's what I'm trying to get to. You know, I used to take phot photographs a lot, and then I realized, I mean, they do document your life and things, and especially with children and grandparents wanting exactly. to share them when they live right. distance. But uh, I realized that I wasn't participating because I was taking the photographs. Mm, yeah. So I stopped because I wanted to be part. You know, I didn't want that separation. Do you find that for yourself? Um, actually, I think that's part of my personality. I <laughs> kind of think that I'm like, always like to be... You're the introvert. I'm the introvert. <laughs> you, <laughs> you got it. You got it. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so I think that's what probably attracted me to photography to start, hmm. you know. Um, so it's, uh, it, it, I, I enjoy doing weddings mm -hmm. because weddings were, I had to come out of the introvert part and mm. get into more of an extroverted, you know, kind of scene with mm. weddings and so forth. But uh, um, I think you have to be the, about the same age as the bride and groom to be <laughs> late to them, yeah. <laughs> to be honest with you. <laughs> now I'm not there. <laughs> well, so. thank you so much for joining yes. us today, well, thank Tom. You. It's been great talking yes. to you about photography. Excellent. Please join us on Friday, September 25th from 4 to 9 p.m. and Saturday, September 26th from 1 to 4.